at my very first calculus lecture, the professor told us that it was trivial and obvious that 0 0.999 on and on and on into infinity equaled 1. Well, to me, it was neither trivial nor obvious. Back in high school, I was such a confident little math puppy. I knew exactly where I was going. I knew where the next mathematical step was. I knew when I'd get there. Everything was so clear. But now, now I was in this new world, this new mysterious world of calculus. I didn't know where I was going. I didn't know when I'd get there. Little did I realize that in that very process, I was doing something very mathematical. I was approaching a limit. Let's take a function, OK? Cool. So we make our little graph here. Let's say this is our, our nice little x-axis, and then we have our, our very nice little y-axis, all right? And so um, let's take a function like, hmm, like that, and the function's going along, and then something happens. We have this, this little gap there. OK, let's say this is at, well, OK, let's say about where x is 10, there's this gap. So it's going along, going along, going along, going along, going along, approaching 10, and then something happens. There's nothing there. As x is approaching 10, y in, at the same time, y is approaching, 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 say 5. OK, so we have x approaching 10, y approaching 5, and then this gap, something happens. In the textbook, it says this point is undefined, but I think that's kind of a dry term. I think just myself, I would say, there's an enormous tragedy of worldwide proportions right there. Something happened to take away from the function there. And there's even a term in math for this, which is that we say that the limit of f of x as x approaches 10 is 5. And by the way, if I can just explain something here, this is the undefined point. This right here, this little break, and this is just a, a break in the blackboard. All right, this is just because they, they couldn't make a blackboard. Evidently, it was too difficult for the blackboard company to actually make it go all the way across. So it actually just has a break there. So this is actually just something that we as instructors have to deal with. You don't have to worry your head about it because you're, you're in the pure world of math. Here's another function. This function is f of x is x times the sine of 1 over x. Of course, you remember sine. That's our old friend sine right there. If you remember this is sin, then I want to deal with the theological aspects later. But right now, we're just talking about sine. And when we take that function and graph it, it looks like this, which is really quite lovely. If any of you have ever done the uh, kind of uh, self-defense, as I have a black belt of many degrees. And this is what you call the praying mantis. It's actually represented by that function. You don't hear that too much in Bruce Lee movies. So. And so it's a little bonus for you. So here, as x is now approaching, 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 approaching 0, uh, the f of x, the function, is oscillating. And it's oscillating in smaller and smaller, smaller, smaller oscillations. And it's going above 0, it's going below 0, it's going above 0, it's going below 0. But actually can never, as, as close as it gets to 0, it can never actually stop at 0. Because if x actually reached 0, then the function would be undefined because we have the 0 there, 1 over 0. You know, it's just a drag. And it's just, we just don't want to deal with it. It's very, just very frustrating. And what we call this function, what we call this process, is we say that the limit of f of x as x approaches 0 is... Zero. And by the way, in this part of the blackboard, if I can just say that this part of the blackboard moves as you write on it. So it doesn't have any breaks in it, but the manufacturers have created this sort of sway to it, which, again, keeps our interest going as instructors. Ah, yes. No one must know what has been written here. Everyone else must be kept in the dark. The secrets of mathematics are only meant for us. And if you don't tell, I'm not going to tell what was just up there. Here's another function. Uh, this function, actually, we're going to get back to a bit later. But if you look at the denominator of this function, you'll see that when x is 2, then we have 4 minus 4, which is 0. And well, there we go again. We're going to have some problems. And if I can just point out this feature of this segment of the blackboard is that it actually doesn't move so much when you write on it. It doesn't have any cracks in it. It just has these preset little points there, just so you, you just can't, you can't, you really have to deal with it, no matter what. There's these little points. These points mean nothing. Ignore, forget that I've just focused on these points right here. OK. Well, here's our problem. Here's our graph. This is the graph of that function. Now, this graph doesn't have squiggles, doesn't have oscillations. It's, it's just kind of a line going down. It's, a, it's what we call in math 
a boring graph. We refer to that as a mathematical term, kind of technical, but it's a, a boring graph here. And, and, and as we see, as x approaches 2, then y is approaching 1. And that's for me the direction as x approaches 2, y approaches 1. But when x, x actually gets to 2, as we can see, we have this <laughs> undefined, okay, mm, Okay, it's undefined, and here we describe this as the limit of f of x as x approaches 2 equals 1. It's sort of like a, a slide. You can picture sort of going down a slide at the playground. You're sliding down, sliding down, but then just when you get to 2, there's nothing there. You're sliding down, sliding down, but just when you get to 2, there's nothing there. You see, you're just sliding down. Everything's just totally fine. You're just enjoying yourself, but when you get to 2, there's nothing there. This is painful. This is, this is fraught with pain. <laughs> well, here we are back at it. We have this, this lovely function here. f of x is equal to 2x minus 2 times x minus 2 over 2x minus 4. So now we get to factor out this side, which is always a lot of fun. So 2x minus 2 is the same as 2 times x minus 1 times x minus 2. And then the denominator here, 2x minus 4, is the same as 2 times x minus 2. And now we get to cancel out stuff, which is always gratifying. And we're left with x minus 1. So here now we've arrived at this new function, x minus 1, which is almost the same as our original function, f of x, unless x is equal to 2. Because as we've seen, when x is equal to 2, then the denominator becomes 2 times 2 minus 4, which is 4 minus 4, which is 0, and it's undefined. So here, we can express it this way. We have the limit of our function, f of x, as x approaches 2, equal to the value of this function, x minus 1, when x is 2, which is 2 minus 1, which is equal to 1. Cool. Huh. The instructor is now going for a two-handed brush stroke. Yes, can he complete the board? No, he's hit the crack. He can't. He's, but the big brush has jumped over. And now we're closing in on the limit of a completely clean blackboard. Obligatory dropping, which is just fun. Okay, so remember our old friend, that formula that we worked out so that found out that f of x was equal to x minus 1, except in the horrible event that x was equal to 2. Well, let's take that function now and put it into our function machine. We have our nice function machine. The engine is not shown here, but here we're taking x, right? And that's what we put into our nice function machine. And then it comes out as delicious f of x. And welcome to Julia Child's Kitchen. I always wanted to say that. Anyhow, I just wanted to show you a function machine. You may want, want to see what a function looks like. Well, a function is kind of like a machine. Um, you go into the function machine and you get transformed by the function machine into, well, actually you don't go into the machine. Usually x goes into the machine. And it gets transformed into f of x or y, whichever you'd like to call it. And your function machine can be all sorts of uh, different kinds of machines. It can do any kind of activity as you want to define it. This is our particular function machine here. It's very lovely. And what this function machine happens to do for us is it's going to take our x value and transform it into our f of x value, as always. Now, our x value in this case is made of blue Play-Doh. Mm. Ah, okay, I'm, I'm already having some hallucinations now. Now what you want to do, and what we're dealing with, not the size of the Play-Doh, but the blueness of it. What our function machine is going to do, it's going to make our Play-Doh a little less blue each time we use it. Okay, so here we have our blue Play-Doh, and so this is how our function machine will work. Our function machine will add some white Play-Doh to this blue Play-Doh, and will put it in the function machine as follows. And then our function machine will transform our x value into f of x. Let's try it now, shall we? All right. And here comes our f of x. Our function machine has now acted upon our original x value of blue. 
to create some just excruciatingly delicious looking fettuccines of f of x. f of x, of course, being fettuccine of x, but a lighter shade of fettuccine. And now we can take this sum of our new value of f of x and put it down here on the f of x side of our chart, and we can see what effect our function machine has had our, on our original x value to turn it into our f of x value. And we're very excited about it. And now we take the next value of x and we add it to the function machine. And here we see our next fettuccine of x, and then the next value of x. And finally, the last value of x. f of x, when it's wider shade of blue. Now we'll add this to this last value, this widest value of f of x, to our sequence here on our chart, right there. We have our column of x values, each of which we fed into our nice function machine. And then we have our column of f of x values, which came out of the function machine. And we can see that as we go along the sequence of f of x values, that the sequence gets ever and ever lighter and lighter and lighter until it approaches a limit of, yes, white. It's that exciting. It's that delicious. OK, so remember our old friend, that formula that we worked out so that found out that f of x was equal to x minus 1, except in the horrible event that x was equal to 2. Well, let's take that function now and put it into our function machine. So now we can actually show these two things, the thing we put in, x, and the thing that comes out, f of x. We can show them in a chart. So let's do that. And we have our chart here. And here we have x. Here we have f of x. OK, so now first, let's say uh, that x is equal to 1. OK, so then when we put 1 into the function machine, what the function machine does is it subtracts 1 from whatever we put into it. So 1 minus 1 equals 0. So f of x is 0. OK, now let's put in something um, a little bigger into the function machine and see if it can really handle it. So let's put in 1.9. OK, we put 1.9 into the function machine. And then the function machine subtracts 1. And what we get is? 0.9. OK, now it seems to be able to handle that, so let's really try to push it, because we, we paid a lot for our function machine, so we want to see if it can handle even more. So let's put in 1.99 into the function machine, and then it spits out 1.99 minus 1, which is 0.99. And now let's just try putting in just something a little bigger. Just try to guess what I'm going to put in next. All right, I'll show you. 1.999, and what will come out is? 0.999. So, OK, so we can look at these two sequences on the two sides of this chart. And we see that as x is approaching 2, y, or f of x, which is the same thing, is approaching 1. And we can now write this down, express this as a limit. We can say that the limit of f of x as x approaches 2 is 1. And what we've been dealing with, even though it looks like in a way we have lots of different kinds of things, but we've actually been taking the same thing and showing it in a bunch of different ways. For example, we can go back up here to the formula that we started with in all of its mathematical grandeur here. f of x equals 2x minus 2 times x minus 2 over 2x minus 4. I know I didn't have to say the whole thing again, but I enjoy saying it. And then we remember that, oh, there's this problem that we have. Of course, if we get, if x is 2, then we have 4 minus 4, and that makes the denominator 0, and then we have this undefined point. OK, so that's one way of doing it. And then we actually did all these calculations. Well, actually, I did. <laughs> saying we, because, you know, I think it's more, it's more generous, really. And then we, we ended up here with f of x calculated to be equal to x minus 1, unless that x is equal to 2. Then we showed it as a picture. We showed it as a picture or as a graph. And here it is. It's our very, very dull and boring graph that has the one little exciting element of the little undefined point here. As x is charging and charging and charging up towards 2, y is charging and charging and charging up towards 1. And so as these two things are charging towards each other, there they go, x going towards 2, y going towards 1. But then x actually can't get to 2. Because when it gets there, when it tries to get there, 
It's undefined. That's why it's so cool that we can have this limit. We have a sense of limit. We can say, well, that undefined point is giving us trouble. So let's not just talk about being at that point, but let's talk about approaching that point. So I'm getting closer and closer and closer and closer and closer to that point. Okay, and that's where we have our sequence. The sequence zero, then 0 0.9, then 0.99, in this case 0.999. Now we can express the sequence in a different way. Let's extend the chart out here because I think, you know, we want more of a chart. I think we always like to have a bigger chart, at least in my family. So here we have, okay, let's call each of these numbers A sub N, Y A. It's the first letter in the alphabet, and it just happened to hit my mind first. So I always have to sing the alphabet song whenever I alphabetize, so I always try to stick with A if I can. So A sub N, so what all this means is that we'll call the first number in our sequence A sub one. We'll call the second number A sub two. And unless something goes terribly wrong with us, I think we're going to call the next number in the sequence a sub 3. And in fact, as we go on and on, each number is a sub n. OK, so now we have this sequence. And now we can describe this sequence also as a limit. And the limit of this sequence, we, well, we, the, this sequence we describe as this limit. We can say the limit of a sub n as n approaches infinity equals 1. And that's the same thing. You see, it's approaching, approaching, approaching 1. And this, a1, a2, a3, as n gets higher and higher, it's also approaching 1. Now we can show this as a number line. I don't know about you, but I really enjoy doing number lines. I don't know why, I just find them restful. OK, so here we have 0, here we have 1. Let's say we have 0.9 about there. OK, so now we see that 0 corresponds on our chart here in our sequence to a sub 1. And our point 0.9 corresponds to a sub 2, and so on and so on. a sub 3 is 0.99. Let's put that about there. Then 0.999 about there, 0.999 about there, 0.999 about there. So we can see in the sequence, we get closer and closer to 1. We're approaching and approaching and approaching 1. We're approaching this limit. We're taking a little step each time, but each time we take another step, that next step is a little shorter than the previous one. Tinier and tinier and tinier and tinier steps. I wonder what's going to happen if I ever reach this one, this limit that I'm approaching. I mean, I sure hope for my sake that this, this limit isn't undefined because we've already found out how painful that can be. Or there's the big sloppy way of writing it down, which is our really old friend here, 0.999 on and on and on into infinity, equaling 1. This very same expression that my TA told me all those years ago, that my TA told me was trivial and obvious. But I didn't think it was trivial or obvious, and well, I don't think it's trivial or obvious now. I mean, just from having lived for a bunch of years since then, I, I've gotten the sense that when, when people tell you something is trivial and obvious, Oftentimes it isn't. Oftentimes there's something very beautiful going on underneath. And if instead of running away, as I did, if you allow yourself to keep exploring, you can find this whole world, this world of approaching limits, this world of undefined points where you, you get closer and closer and then it drops away. There's mystery, there's fear. There's a certain kind of faith in continuing to go forward, taking those ever tinier steps. I mean, there's a great deal of drama and a great deal of excitement. And that, to me, that, to me, is the experience of math. Of course, that's me. Maybe it's you, too. And of course, the true test of any mathematical activity is we want to see how tasty is the result. And look at this. Could it look better? This beautiful, savory blue fettuccine from our fettuccine of X machine. It's a, oh, the aroma. It's just, it, it almost knocks you out. Let's taste the results of our mathematical labors here. Oh, it's all worth it, isn't it, really? Just to, to do some math. And you can just practically taste.